from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 What really resonated with me today in this reading, of course, as I shared with the children, was how we look at sin and how we look at evil. You know, Paul's line as he's sitting there and he's speaking, he's speaking, he goes through all of this in 1 Corinthians, focusing on what it is to build up the church, that we are called to speak and do things that are going to build up one another in the faith. You see, the church is not this building, this structure. The church is each and every one of us. And the things that we say as followers of Christ should be things that are meant to build up one another in the faith. And he is speaking because even in that time, there were those that had thought that certain gifts were better than others. And there are those at the time that were speaking in tongues and thought that was wonderful to be able to speak in tongues and didn't worry about if their brother or sister did not understand what they were saying. And he was telling them that, no, I can speak tongues just like all of you. But I would rather build up my brother next to me in the faith who, when I'm speaking in tongues, does not speak the tongue that I am speaking and does not understand the word that I am saying. And I would rather see that brother in faith or sister in faith be built up in such a way in the faith that their hearts be lifted, their spirits be lifted. Because what comes out of my mouth should reflect the love of Christ to those who need to know God. And the same is true with each of us as we live and we walk in our journey of faith with one another. As we focus on what God is doing. Realizing that we need to hear the word of God. Simon, as he was tired, I'm sure, on that boat and all the workers were tired because they were cleaning their nets and they had been throwing them out into the water and pulling them in and the heaviness of those nets. And then they get pushed out and Jesus gets them to put out onto the water and he sits and he teaches. And if Jesus was not speaking a word that Simon didn't under, was not speaking a word that Simon could understand, then Simon's heart would not have been moved. It would have done no good. But because Jesus was speaking the word of truth and Simon heard it, he realized, especially after seeing the great miracle that had occurred, that he was in the presence of one that is great, that had the Holy Spirit within him. He felt that he was in the presence of he did not yet know at that time that this was the Christ, the chosen one. His heart had not, may have not been moved at that moment, but he did know that he was in the presence of one who is filled with the word of God. And we are called to be the same as we go out into the world because we have been given the glorious gift of the Holy Spirit. We have been given the great and wonderful power that God gives us. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we are not like infants in evil. I pray that I were like an infant in evil. Unfortunately, we are all not. Those of us, we are not infants of evil, though we should be infants of evil. We shouldn't be looking to evil as something that we desire to do. It shouldn't be something that is second nature in our hearts and our minds. Unfortunately, oftentimes we fall short and we fail. And the glorious thing is, is God forgives us when we realize it. We can turn and repent. If we were infants of evil, there would never be any sin that we could be guilty of. Because as infants, our hearts would be too young to know that we are doing evil and would be easily corrected by God. We would be willing and more mendable and malleable to what God desires to do. We wouldn't be burdened with the things of pride that tend to catch us and cause us to think that we are right. But we would be more open for correction. And we'd also be innocent because we would not know better. We are meant to be mature in our thinking. 
We are meant to be mature in our thinking in the sense that we know and understand and seek God in everything. We realize our own weakness. We realize our need for a Savior. We realize how fallen we are. As we understand that evil is naturally within our hearts, we know that we are called to repentance. Now, wonderfully, we know it, knowing this and understanding this doesn't excuse us from doing evil. We are not excused to go out and do whatever we want to in the world. We are not excused to go and make a plan in our minds that, yes, we're going to go and do something that we know is wrong. Because then I can come on Sunday or I can go before God or I can go to the confessional booth and I can say, Lord, I've sinned. Please forgive me. And then we can know that we, we can find that forgiveness. But we don't do the evil with that in mind. We should not, and we are called not to, go out and rebel against God purposely. You know, I know that was one thing is I, one thing I've heard many times is I talk to people and they, and they, and they talk about the faith and they often look and they say, you know, I remember when I was growing up and I had friends of mine that were Roman Catholic and I knew they would go out and they would do some of the most, uh, uh, they would go out and they would do things, but they would always excuse it saying, yes, well, it's Friday night, I'm going to live and I'm going to live it up because tomorrow I'm going to go in and I'm going to enter that confessional booth and I'm going to hear the words, I'm going to hear the words from the priest of what I can do for my penitence and then I can go and I can be freed from it all. As Christians, we don't have to do penance. We uh, just confess and we know that God forgives. And there is nothing that God will hold against us except one. The mocking of the Holy Spirit. See, God will not be mocked. And God does not take mocking well. But we, when we know and we fall short and we fail in our lives, we can receive a full forgiveness of everything that we do. And the innocence of it all is if we are like infants to evil, we, when we know it in our heart, we can confess it. And find and know that the loving Father is not looking down on his nose at us, ready to punish us for the actions that we are, where we have failed. To be an infant to evil isn't that you seek to go out and do evil. You don't desire to harm your brother or your sister in Christ. You don't desire to do anything against another. Though you will. To be an infant in evil is to do so, and when you realize that you have done so, repent immediately. Because it would break your heart to know, just like when we look at an infant, and uh, when an infant does wrong, and you say no to that infant. The most common response that you'll see is they hear the words no, they hear a harshness in the tone, and they respond in tears. They respond in tears knowing that they have done something that has displeased the loved one, their parent. And it breaks their heart because in their spirit, in their mind, they may feel as if all the love that they, they thought they could count on had been torn away from them in that moment. And then as an infant, and as a father, we pick up that infant that's crying and we comfort that infant, knowing, letting them know that, yes, we did not like what they did. We did not, we, we, we did not approve. It was wrong what they did, but they still know our love. And we comfort them knowing that they are loved to say, no, 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 you are loved. I love you. You are wonderful. And that is what God does to each of us. 
When we realize and we are broken in our spirits, where we know that we have fallen short, where we know that we have done something against God, when we know that there is something that we need to be made right of in our spirit, we can hear the words of our Father that says, I love you, and he embraces us, and he comforts us, and he gives us the comfort of forgiveness, knowing that there is nothing that is separating his love for us. And as we are mature in our thinking, we realize this in our own minds. And we realize that there are those in this world that are like infants in their thinking. They do not realize and hear the comforting words of God. They do not hear the promises of salvation. They do not hear the words of forgiveness. They do not hear the love of the Father. All they hear is the scolding voice of the Father. The scolding voice of the one that says, You are living in a way or doing such things that are contrary to what I want for you. You are doing something that is against what I desire. You are doing something that is displeasing to me. And in their infantile thinking, they want to flee from God. They turn from God. They run from God. They blame God for, for the sin that they have found themselves within. They blame God for the hurt feelings they may have inside of themselves. Instead of hearing the comforting words of the Father, the forgiveness that is offered at the moment that we realize the wrong that we have done. And we turn to him and we receive his embrace. We receive the warmth and the comforting words. <coughs> as opposed to the kicking and pushing away from the Father that is wishing to let us know how much he loves us. We are called we are called to be infants to evil, knowing that it is not for us to do. We hear the warnings and we hear the calls of God, <coughs> similarly to those of a parent. When a child is reaching towards a hot burner and the words are no, get away. That'll hurt you. As an infant or a child, they may be upset about hearing the words, no, get away, that will hurt you. Because they don't understand the dangers that are before them. Not knowing the words are being said, not out of anger, not out of rejection, but out of love and a desire to protect. So it is with our Father when He warns us of all evil that surrounds us. And we as followers of Christ, as we are mature in our thinking, we are called to be that voice of the Father in those places, that voice of the Father that does point to the things that are life-giving and points away from the things that bring death. Unfortunately, often we desire more to fit in. We don't want people looking at us like we're strange, that we're different. But we desire more to fit in with them without wanting to heed or give that warning the Father gives us. And we allow infantile thinking to enter into our own brains. We desire to do that which we think builds us up. We desire to do those things that we think helps us to fit in. As opposed to being a light in the world. God desires for us to be mature in our thinking, to be a light to those who are suffering, 
to be a light to those who do not know the glory of God, because as the Father loves on that infant, so the Father loves on us. There is nothing that we can do that does not make our Father love us. And when we quit kicking against God, when we quit pushing God away, when we quit clawing at his face and telling him the words no, and we hear his words, I love you, I forgive you, I desire you to know my love. And we let his words build us up. Then we build up those who are struggling, those who are suffering, and those who are in pain. That is the gift. That is the message. That is the hope. May your hearts be filled with the love of Christ from head to toe. May you know him. And may his peace, that glorious peace, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the one true faith, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.